this building for 25 years has been a fantastic place for the arts to grow. And the minute it went up, there were thousands of things in it. It was never empty and the festival really flourished. One of the prime purposes of a festival centre was to form the cultural heart of the city. And after all this time, now I think everybody would agree that it fulfils its purpose very well. It's the first thing we saw when we flew into Adelaide. It's an amazing building. We couldn't wait to take a look inside. One of our aims at the Festival Centre is to not only bring in work from around the world and around Australia that's the very, very best, but also to act as a focus for the extraordinary range of work that has grown up in Adelaide. Well, Tukana people, they like living all down this river area. This is where our people met for thousands of years. It's because it's near a water source and a food source. We've got fish in the river, plants they could eat. Of course, then Europeans came. The bulk of the migrants were from the United Kingdom. Uh, but in many ways they were um, quite diverse. There was a significant German community as well, and they all had a strong folk element in their music and dance. The Elder Park Rotunda was built in the early 1880s, and it became a popular venue for brass band music, which both the British and the German settlers brought to the colony. For a brief period in the 1920s, the floating palais provided the young people of Adelaide with a very exotic meeting place where they could dance and listen to the latest music. The whole area around the river had a very strong connection as well with the post-war migrant groups. Some of the buildings were actually used as a migrant hostel. One of the interesting things about uh, South Australia is in many ways it's always been multicultural. By the 1960s, South Australia was host to many ethnic communities. These enriched our culture at a time when interest in the arts and arts facilities was growing rapidly. The first Adelaide festivals were a huge success, even though the venues were pretty inadequate at the time. Artistic director of the festival is John Bishop, elder professor of music in the University of Adelaide. John Bishop led the push in the early 1960s to get a world-class performing arts centre built in Adelaide. Right from the start, a number of eminent people gave their support and it became a particular interest of mine too. The buildings might have looked all right outside, but you know, you have to have performance areas which are built for the function. If the festival was to grow, you can't put on things like a major symphony orchestra in an agricultural hall. You have to have bigger, better performance spaces built for the function, and that's what we did. the 
Adelaide Festival Centre was a very exciting experience. We were setting the directions for a performing arts centre which was radically new, not just for a sleepy city like Adelaide, but for the whole of Australia too. You only have to remember how excited people here got about something as simple as what to wear to the theatre to realise how groundbreaking this change was. Suddenly, we were on the world map and it seemed like everyone in town wanted to be part of the action. Mr Chairman, Mr Premier and Lord Mayor, I have much pleasure in now declaring open the Adelaide Festival Theatre. The second phase of the project commenced in 1974 and involved the construction of the playhouse, uh, the space, the amphitheatre, and afterwards the plaza and car parking, all of which took about four years and cost us five and a half million dollars. We got a pretty good turnout for the opening. It wasn't quite the tumultuous event that the opening of the Festival Theatre was. What did people think? Well, everybody who was knowledgeable about the theatre was ecstatic. Over the last 25 years, we've established a tradition of excellence at the Adelaide Festival Centre, which this government is really keen to build upon. With the refurbishments that are currently underway and with the rebuilding plans, we want to ensure that we retain a world-class centre of excellence that avid theatre-goers such as myself can continue to enjoy, but it's also of great benefit to the economic, cultural, creative life of the state. I think there's no better indication of the quality and versatility of our venues than the extraordinary range of performances that have come in here over the last 25 years. Everything from Dame Joan Sutherland to Dame Edna Everidge. And before the Festival Centre was built, many of these acts never came to Adelaide at all. I've worked here over 25 years. There is a very special feeling here and there's a sort of a sense of wanting to make things work and it goes right through the staff. I mean, you have to make the effort to make it there, but it's never not been there. So the Playhouse here is, is in, in, um, for me, an incredibly good place to work in in the, in, in the way that the contact between public and actor is very, very, very good design. It's a fantastic auditorium to sit inside and, and watch something. It's also a beautiful theatre to work in too. It's very open, very easy, the acoustics are fantastic. And I especially admire the people who work here. They're very professional and they're very helpful. And God, they do enjoy what they are doing. And I think that's the most important thing in all theatres. And we also did a season of uh, Tristan and Isolde of Wagner when the SSO was down in the pit. And I listened to the, quite a lot of it up in the theatre and it sounded just stunning. And I think it's a wonderful opera theatre. Uh, I think that's its real forte. 
I think it's a great, great place for the ring cycle. I've played, I guess, in all of the areas of the festival centre. I did A Star Is Torn on the main stage. You name it, I've sung in it around the Adelaide Festival Centre. And over those years, I think it's been such a fantastic boon for an emerging young Adelaide artist to have the resource of really the finest uh, theatre complex in the country. Number one, Theatre Street. I'm going to make it, yes, you can take it from me. Till I do, life's incomplete. I'll get there one day, be someone one day you'll see. You'll pay your rent with hopes and tears and laughter until that day it's happy ever long. Visitors to the Festival Centre get to see some outstanding performances on stage. But what they don't get to see are the equally outstanding performances of our backstage people. The set we're building now, because it's so big, it's never been together. So we've sort of tried to plan it so it'll go together like a big Meccano set, but if it doesn't, <laughs> that's when the fun starts. We've got smaller shows and bigger shows and you can have up to 40 um, costumes per show sometimes. Our work's about rigging, patching, focusing and plotting the lights for theatrical performances. We do that under great pressure in a short amount of time and then sit back and enjoy the show. The most exciting time for stage management is actually the tech rehearsals. By opening night, everything should be in place and run like clockwork. Ladies and gentlemen, of the cast and chorus, please stand by. And we're ready to go. Every day there are dozens of things that go on at the Festival Centre as well as the evening performances. Things like educational programs for students, concerts for senior citizens, school tours of the complex, visual arts exhibitions and displays from the Performing Arts Collection and many other community activities. The Festival Centre also actively promotes the arts to young people through its Something on Saturday program, through school holiday shows and through an extensive education program. What does the Festival Centre mean to me? It's actually a focus of some of my work. It offsets my work as a drama teacher in a secondary school here. I've been bringing students here for many, many years. It, it means international shows, local shows, big shows, small shows, affordable ones, things you have to scrape and save for. It's also given me an opportunity as a performer, as a school child, to actually perform in the space. So that was a really wonderful experience to be able to go into this big stage and um, play the violin and tap dance. I think the main thing regarding the, uh, the Festival Centre is the fact that it does allow international companies to come through and perform before the audiences of Adelaide. I really like the way that the Festival Centre is located very closely to the Central Business District. It's, um, it, it makes it very accessible, I think. It's a wonderful location for a festival. I've been here four times, I mean, from Canada, and I must say, it just is terrific. Because we have got um, more discerning audiences than uh, many people uh, would like to accept. They're very educated, they're very educated because we've got this long history and because perhaps the Festival Centre has allowed that. I could just come and watch live theatre actually up and in action yeah. and just be introduced to other cultures and another way of looking at life. Up there. All the 
critics writing how Lola stole the show and swept everybody off their feet. Making good, knock on wood, Lola, here comes Hollywood. Hey kid, you've got the 